So previously I did a video talking about my absolute favorite systems to emulate on the Steam Deck. And it should come as absolutely no surprise that the Steam Deck is an emulation beast and you can emulate all sorts of systems from as early as the NES era all the way up to like the PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Dreamcast pretty comfortably. But one of the things that I mentioned in that video is that the PlayStation 2 really was one of my favorite systems to emulate on the Steam Deck just because, well, there were a ton of great games for the PlayStation 2 and a lot of them still hold up today. So that's why I wanted to go over today was really just to talk a little bit about how I have my Steam Deck set up to play PlayStation 2 games because it is a little bit more nuanced than just letting Emu Deck do its thing because there are some configuration options that you have to tweak to really get the best experience. Then I wanted to go over a selection of games that I've been playing on it really just to test out and see how they perform. And then finally just talk about a few games that I'm playing that are personal favorites that really weren't part of testing. I was just really excited to play them. So all that being said, let's just go ahead and dive right in and first talk a little bit about PCSX2, which is the emulator that I'm using to play these games on my Steam Deck, and some of the configuration challenges you might run into when you're trying to get set up for the first time. And I should go ahead and point out that Emu Deck does install a PlayStation 2 emulator for you in PCSX2. However, you will still have to go out and find a PS2 BIOS to load into the files to make sure that it can play all of the games appropriately. Now, unfortunately, I can't really link to where those BIOS files are, but you should be able to find them easily enough. Now, as far as all of the configuration settings for PCSX2 that you want to tweak before you actually fire up a game, I mostly left all of these for the default. However, you may want to pay special attention to setting the aspect ratio so that you can make sure that the image appears the way that you would want it to. Now, if you're a purist and you want it to appear in the original 4x3 aspect ratio, you can do that, which will obviously put some black bars on either side of the image since it is a widescreen display. Or on the flip side, if you don't mind the image being a little bit stretched out, which I know is heresy to a lot of people, but if it's something that you don't mind, you can go ahead and let it stretch the image out and opt for a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And another point on setting up the aspect ratio before you go ahead and fire up any games on the Steam Deck is that there were some PlayStation 2 titles that did include native support for widescreen displays. God of War 2 was one of them. If you look here, you can see if you dig into the video settings in God of War 2, you actually have the option here of just sticking with the standard 4x3 or telling it, yes, I want to go into a widescreen display mode. Now, if you just go ahead and leave the 4x3 aspect ratio setting in God of War 2, but then you also have the widescreen setting set within PCSX2, then the image is going to look really stretched out. However, if you change the settings within God of War 2 and say, yes, I want to use a widescreen display, then it will actually fill the screen in a non-stretched way and look more akin to a modern God of War. Now, I'm not saying there are no other settings you'll ever have to visit in PCSX2, X2 to get a good experience. Obviously, it's not practical for me to test every single one of the PlayStation 2 games that are out there or anything. So if you have any recommendations or any tips, if you're somebody who's been emulating PS2 games yourself, please let me know in the comments below if there's something that I've, you know, absolutely overlooked here when I'm exploring the settings. But all of that out of the way, I will just say that generally speaking, aside from modifying the aspect ratio, PlayStation 2 has performed pretty well just with everything set at default. And since we've been talking about the aspect ratio settings in God of War 2, this seems like a natural segue to go ahead and talk a little bit about what playing God of War 2 is like on the Steam Deck. Now, sadly, I've never beaten God of War 2, and I suppose by all rights, I could just go ahead and fire up like the remastered version on the PS4 or something like that. But considering I'm enjoying playing almost everything on the Steam Deck lately, it seemed like a natural fit for the testing for this video. And I have to say, after working through some of those earlier sections, that it plays really well. It maintains a mostly solid 60 FPS, although occasionally it will dip into the 50s. And for the most part, I didn't really encounter any major problems playing through, you know, what is a very action heavy game. I did notice there were a few graphical inconsistencies and glitches, particularly when I first dove into water with Kratos. So it might in fact be that God of War 2 is one of those games that I really just need to do a deeper dive into with some research online to figure out if there are some very specific settings that I need to tweak in the emulator to get the best experience out of it. But it was hardly a deal breaker for me and ultimately I just had a blast controlling Kratos and yet another portable God of War experience. After originally playing it on the PSP, I almost felt like what I was playing experiencing God of War 2 on the Steam Deck is probably how I remembered playing the original God of War games on the PSP, although I will say that if I went back to that now, obviously the screen is not nearly as brilliant and fantastic as what we have on the Steam Deck, but still, it still gave me that feeling of the first time that I actually played like Chains of Olympus, for example. And despite being over 15 years old at this point, and maybe not quite as wondrous as it once was, at least from a technical perspective, artistically it definitely holds up, so if you're looking for a fast frenetic action game with over the top boss battles and no small amount of quick time events I'm sure, you will probably find exactly what you're looking for in God of War 2. Not to mention the controls are absolutely butter smooth and it is just a blast watching Kratos just tear through legions of enemies in the most grisly ways imaginable. Now next up is a game whose controls are not butter smooth, however I still think of it as a classic and I've beaten it a few times over the years and I was excited to play it in the handheld format and that is Silent Hill 2. And one of the reasons I wanted to play Silent Hill 2 in particular, aside from just being a personal favorite, is I was a little bit concerned about how the fog would play out in that game, because I know that depending on the version of it that you play, the fog can come off a little bit wonky. Plus, the fog's really important for sort of building the atmospheric dread that Silent Hill is known for, and it's not really just used as, you know, a sort of spackle or a way to kind of cover up draw distance limitations that were, you know, often in place for those early 3D titles. 
However, I did notice one weird thing about it, both in the main scenario and in Maria's Born from a Wish scenario, and that was that there were these really thin lines, almost like the screen had been cut into like kind of the rule of thirds pattern. They're pretty thin and not that noticeable, although occasionally during transitionary scenes or in exceptionally dark areas, which to be fair, Silent Hill would have no shortage of, they might be more noticeable. It's not something that would be a deal breaker for me, however it is something to be aware of, and after a little bit of cursory research, what I found was apparently other people have also experienced this when trying to emulate Silent Hill 2, so I don't think this is a deck specific problem, but it's something to be aware of if this is one of the titles that you were looking forward to playing on the Steam Deck. Again, as it stands, I don't mind it that much, although it's something I would probably try to rectify in the future considering the rest of it looks just as slick as I remembered it on the PS2. Well, graphically anyways. From a control perspective, even though I love Silent Hill 2, I wouldn't exactly call its combat mechanics uh, smooth They're actually pretty clunky, and strafing with the shoulder buttons just does not feel great. Now don't get me wrong, I appreciate tank controls as much as the next old school fixed camera angle survival horror fan, I'm just saying that I've been spoiled by more modern, combat ready protagonists. But Silent Hill 2 is still a horror classic, and for the most part it felt as smooth as any time that I played it on the PlayStation 2. Not to mention it does have that added benefit of being able to be played in the handheld form factor, which again is kind of awesome and provides a more intimate horror experience and one that I'm a huge fan of. Now moving on to a more technically demanding game, I fired up the original Killzone. Now before that Killzone 2 2005 trailer started blowing people's minds at the time, the original Killzone was no graphical slouch. And I don't think it's a stretch to say that it was probably pushing the PS2 to its limits in terms of what was actually capable of being displayed on screen. But despite the ambitious graphics, the original Killzone was admittedly kind of a middling experience. Although for me, personally, I always prefer grittier shooters over hyper-saturated cartoony ones, and Killzone landed right around the time that dirty, brownish-gray realism was just permeating every shooter that was hitting the marketplace. Now, there are probably better shooters on the PlayStation 2, but the truth is I didn't play many of them around that time, and Killzone was one of those things that sucked me in, again, probably because of those ambitious graphics that it was touting. So if you have any suggestions, I would definitely be open to that, but as it stands, just playing through it, it played well enough for what it was, but again, if you've played the original Killzone, then you've probably realized that it did have some problems with things like hit the detection or weird enemy AI problems, but as far as how it performed on deck, it played perfectly fine. I'm not sure it would be the top choice shooter that you would return to again, but nonetheless, as somebody who was just trying to kind of push, you know, uh, PS2 emulation through its paces on the Steam Deck and really see what I could get out of it, it seemed like a decent stress test for the system and it performed well. But now for a game that is the polar opposite of that dingy sort of gray rust colored look that a lot of action games are having around the time would be an unmitigated classic for the PlayStation 2, and that is Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Now, Vice City was one of my favorite PS2 games, thanks in no small part to an amazing soundtrack. But beyond the audio, the visuals were just gorgeous with some really candy-coated lighting effects that made neon-soaked nighttime missions just a joy. And honestly, the whole color palette of Vice City is like stepping into a synthwave fever dream. And it runs totally smooth on the Steam Deck. And that's great because I think the only other alternative I'd really have if I wanted to play Vice City on the Steam Deck would be like, you know, the GTA Definitive Edition trilogy that came out. But as we all know, that's sort of had its own problems and I don't think it's natively purchasable through Steam anyways. Sure, it's a little bit dated by modern GTA standards, but if you're looking for an open world crime simulator that is incredibly well steeped in 80s culture, Vice City is still a ton of fun and again, runs great on the Steam Deck. But speaking of open worlds, another taxing title that I decided to try on the Steam Deck was Shadow of the Colossus. Now, to be fair, I've never beaten Shadow of the Colossus, despite the fact that I've bought it three times on PS2, 3, and 4 at this point, but I figured why not go to the root PS2 experience, since at the time, it was one of those technical titles that really did push the PS2 hardware pretty hard. And in my experimenting with Shadow of the Colossus, I would say it's a little bit of a mixed bag from a performance perspective. Anytime I was up close fighting one of the Colossuses, or Colossi, whatever the word you would use is, uh, the performance was great. I had no problem clambering up these beasts and the frame rate remained pretty consistent. However, anytime I was riding the horse out in the open world, that's when I would see the frame rate really start to take some hits. Now at no point did it really dip to what I would call unplayable levels or anything like that, but you will definitely notice some performance slowdown when you're riding around out in the open. But if that's not something that bothers you, Shadow of the Colossus is still a beautiful game. And while I suspect I will finally finish it on the PS4 version rather than emulating it on the Steam Deck, it's nice to know that people who do have a particular fondness for this you know, classic title will still be able to play it even in an emulated form on the Steam Deck. Again, probably not the best way you could play Shadow of the Colossus, but if you're already loading up a bunch of PS2 games on your deck anyways and you want to make sure this one will play, it will. Just, again, not the best performing game that I've seen so far. So yeah, to kind of wrap up the testing portion of this video, I would say that my PlayStation 2 experience on the deck so far has been pretty great. Not perfect though. Occasionally you will find weird graphical hiccups, or in some games that are more technically demanding, you will find frame rate dips. Or sometimes I would find, particularly in cutscenes, that there would be some weird artifacting that would happen around the edges of the screen. Now again, this might be something that is just universal to emulation whenever you're trying to emulate these experiences, and it's probably not specific to the Steam Deck, but they are things to be aware of. 
However, again, none of these is enough of a deal breaker that I would not play PS2 games on the Steam Deck. It's been a blast. Now, all that being said, I did want to talk about a few games that I loaded up, not because I had any interest in really testing them or, you know, trying to do anything like objective about measuring the performance of how it played on the Steam Deck, but they were games that I just want to play because I personally find them to be fun and they were some of my favorites from the PS2 era. Uh, one of the first ones would be Metal Gear Solid 2, which I think was a lot of people's favorite game from the PS2 era. And when it first came out, that was the most anticipated title that I could have thought of for the PlayStation 2. I'd only really come into Metal Gear Solid a couple years prior, coming in way late in the PlayStation's life cycle to really develop an appreciation for that, and by extension Kojima. So of course I was going to have to fire it up on the Steam Deck, and it plays great. Which was surprising, because that also had some pretty tricky effects that were in play on the original PlayStation 2 hardware. And I thought that I'd encounter some, you know, uh, maybe not consistent frame rates, but it actually ran really, really smooth, at least in the opening tanker level, right? I didn't play through the entire game or anything like that. And one of the nice things about playing Metal Gear Solid 2, or I mean, really, to be fair, any game when you're emulating it, is that, you know, save states can definitely make some of those more difficult sections a little bit more manageable. But yeah, it looked and played great on the Steam Deck. And something else that looked and played great, even though I would not call this a critical darling by any stretch of the imagination, it's just something that I like because, well, I love Bruce Campbell, and that would be Evil Dead Regeneration. Now, I know normally you would think about playing horror games like in October or something like that, but for me, particularly cabin-based horror games always felt like a summertime jam. Now, as the Evil Dead games go, Regeneration is probably one of the better ones, and crucially, one that I did not get to play during the PlayStation 2's original life cycle. And what got me the most is that the gameplay seems to be a lot faster and a lot more fluid than other Evil Dead games that I've played before. Ash can just stylistically dispose of deadites with finishing moves, and thankfully you have unlimited ammo for weapons and gas for the chainsaw, which is such a good idea. Not to mention Ash does have a rage mode, which lets you just eviscerate deadites with double damage, which is just kind of rad in its own right. And it runs great. I mean, it's not as pretty as some of the other games on this list, but nonetheless, if you are an Evil Dead fan or a Bruce Campbell fan or a Sam Raimi fan, I think you will have some fun with Regeneration, and it runs really well on the deck. And the last one that I just had to fire up because it was the precursor to some other great games in the genre that would come after it was X-Men Legends. As a precursor to, well, like X-Men Legends 2 and Marvel Ultimate Alliance, and then finally we got like a Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 on the Switch, which was just so awesome. The original one that really got me excited was X-Men Legends. Now, it too is a little bit dated. However, I really love the cell shaded like comic book aesthetic that this game has, and it still moves and controls great. I had not touched this game in years, so firing it up on the deck was a real joy, and the emulation worked just about flawlessly for it. It just perfectly nails the fun factor of like a four player arcade beat em up, but it has some depth and nuance to it too, depending on which mutant you want to control and how you want to outfit them. And while it's nowhere near as robust as something like a modern incarnation of Marvel Ultimate Alliance or anything like that, the gameplay still holds up surprisingly well, and I was so glad to see that it performed well on the Steam Deck. All right, so I think that pretty much wraps up and encapsulates my PlayStation 2 experience on the Steam Deck so far. Not totally flawless, but so good that I have zero reservations about diving into any number of PlayStation 2 classics from my youth. But hey, what about you? Are there any games that I should be emulating on the Steam Deck from the PlayStation 2 era that maybe I've never explored before? Or if you've played PlayStation 2 games on the Steam Deck already, or you have some experience with emulation under PCSX2, if there are any settings or configuration changes that I should be making for a better experience or one that would benefit anybody else who's watching this video, please let me know in the comments below because I would love to hear your perspective on it. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch these videos. It means a ton to me. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.